everyone, Jeff Lee here from Able Cine, joined today by JC Siaka from the Integration Department here at Able. Uh, he is our Integration Design Engineer. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. I think a lot of folks maybe don't even know that we have an Integration Department, but some of the key projects you've done are, are quite numerous, but like I would say this space, the Able Cine Training Theaters, have been a big part of that as well. So thank you for all your work. Of course. Uh, and you know, part of what I think the department does, uh, or maybe is what they're most well known for, is installing, in addition to sound and lighting and everything else, acoustic screens, is of course deploying cameras in various configurations. So in a theater like this, as an example, uh, your department and you, of course, specifically have a lot of experience with PTZ or pan tilt zoom style cameras. Correct. So we're looking today at the Canon CRN500. Uh, there's also the sister camera, the CRN300 as mm -hmm. well. But we have the 500 with us today. Uh, so we're, we were really, I think, surprised pleasantly when they, Canon gave us the announcement on these because of a lot of the key features. So yes. kind of wanted to ask you what your thoughts were, sort of what like jumped out at you immediately when you read the, the spec sheet, Canon. Yeah, um, it's a great it's a great camera. It has a one inch sensor, and so it it matches well with the rest of the Canon cinema line. And it's it's a PTZ that can really it, it's very versatile because it does have that high image quality, and it's it's not a glorified security camera like most people would think, right? Yeah. And so this is really a cinema camera that's just housed in this pan tilt zoom enclosure. And it's really powerful and it's very easy to use also. Yeah, and that's important. And I think that point is really uh, you know, illustrative. I think a lot of people do think of it as the thing you jam in the corner and forget about and it becomes a slightly better quality security camera, which of course this is not. At its heart, the DNA of this, especially the sensor technology, comes from a lot of what they learned about the cinema EOS line and the XF family of cameras. Uh, so, you know, to that regard, I think, you know, some of the things that interested us the most was the image quality, like you mm -hmm. mentioned. Uh, and, and, you know, you've, you've mentioned some projects to me when we were chatting about this, that this would cut beautifully with a traditional operated camera. Right. Uh, you know, that one has on a tripod or is handheld or whatnot. Yeah, and that's the nice thing about it. Is a lot of people have C300s, C500s, C200s, right? And they can all use this as another B camera for that, that whole line. And a lot of people are starting, you know, just starting to get into the multicam kind of world. And this is a great way to kind of start that and, and not really overwhelm yourself, right? Because it's, it's tough when you're starting to, you know, it's tough to set up one camera package, let alone three, four, and, you know, once it starts getting bigger. This is something, it comes right out of the case, you plug it in, you could use one cable, and that's it. So it really minimizes the setup time, especially if you're doing a multicam where it's just a pop-up and you're on location, mm -hmm. which is a lot of what we're seeing. We're seeing a lot of corporate events um, where they're bringing in a small switcher and three, four cameras, and this is the perfect camera for something like that because it, it has built-in NDI, which it will allow you to put it on any NDI network, so it'll work great with like a TriCaster switcher or a vMix machine. Um, and it, the control is there also. So you have control through the web GUI or through Canon's RP100, their controller. And so it makes it very easy. Um, with the XC protocol, you can use their controller to not only control the pan tilt zoom cameras, but any of the cam Canon cameras that also can support the XC protocol. So you can do camera shading just from that, from that control panel. Right, and that's pretty unique. That's actually something that Canon is doing as open source right now. So anyone can uh, download the plugins and the tools exactly. and API and, and look at that. And the fact that it will talk to a traditional sort of PTZ camera, as well as a classic XF or Cinema EOS style camera body is right. key as well. Right, so it makes it very flexible in any of those environments. Right, and I think you've touched upon something really interesting too is control mm -hmm. connectivity. Of course, we have the Canon control panel, which you would expect in a in, in most install situations, but yes. I imagine there must be a lot of situations where there's no need for or they don't want uh, mm -hmm. a physical control panel. So there's things like the web GUI that right. you just discussed. Yeah, so the nice thing about this camera is it, it, it has a very nice web GUI that's easy to navigate. So you can, you can pull up three web pages with your three cameras and you can have all your controls at your fingertips right there. It, it makes it a little bit easier, in my opinion, than the joystick, but it, it also depends on your application, right? Sure. Sometimes you, you might be able to, to set your presets on the camera so that you're not actually using the joystick and the zoom, you're just recalling your preset. Right. And that makes it, it very easy for people that are, are doing those types of, of running gun setups, but multicam style, where they don't really have time for the setup, but they want the image quality, so this is the solution. Right, and you know, you mentioned too that the fact that it can be a smaller crew size because now one person might be responsible for multiple cameras. Exactly. But, but they have those tools available, like you said, the website is great. 
yeah. when you first showed that to me, it was amazing to see, not just see the image, of course, which we would expect, but all of the camera controls for image, shutter speed, you know, painting, mm -hmm. white balance, et cetera, but also, like you also mentioned, the presets, which is really cool. Yeah. They can just tap. And, and the presets are very handy because people can come in, once you're set and, and all your, your talent is in place, then you can punch up and, and, and save your presets. That way, once the show starts, you, you have a preset for each speaker or whoever's on, on set there, and it makes it that much easier where you're, you're, you're now changing camera shots at the push of a button. So. Right. I think a lot of those features are why we actually deployed them here in the mm -hmm. Ableton New Theater. So we have three of these permanently installed. Uh, and of course, we're actually capturing this video today uh, with these cameras as well. Uh, but those are kind of some of the strong suits. But in addition to NDI, of course, there's the kind of the traditional suite of connectivity options. Yep, right? absolutely. So if we want to spin this around and take mm -hmm. a look, basically what we have is we have the LAN. This is here for your network port and all your NDI stuff. This here is your HDMI. Then you have uh, 3G SDI, Genlock, and then your two audio inputs. And the mic inputs are nice because a lot of times on set, you, you're, you're struggling to figure out how to, how to inject the audio into your video feed, right? right? And with these cameras, they just put the XLRs right on the back and make it that much easier for you. So it, it, it's a nice solution for if you have to have a couple of mics in different areas around the space. So it, it makes it really easy to just embed that audio right on the signal. Right, and then that prevents having to have an audio mixer if you don't need it. Correct. Project project basis, of course. But yeah, it's interesting too that uh, a lot of what we think of as the Canon image, which is a really beautiful image, uh, is, is built into a camera like this too. Uh, but in addition to some of the actual aesthetic qualities, we also have some of the technical capabilities too, like you mentioned one inch sensor, but also supports dual pixel. Um, yeah, with this camera, the dual pixel autofocus is key because it's not a camera where you're going to really be manually adjusting focus and, and manually pulling focus for specific things. You can do that. However, it's really meant to be a one push, snap to your subject, and then catch that focus. And right. it, it really is, is quick to make those moves, and it makes it that much easier when you're, you, when you're trying to switch from camera to camera. It, it, it could almost, you can almost have less cameras with more diverse looking shots because you're using the same cameras and quickly moving them around. Right, which goes to speak, of course, back to the budgeting thing, the, the time of setup, right? That's all part of what exactly. we have to think about when we're setting up a production. Right. And, and you bring up a great point, which is with a camera like this, rather than a lock off, that maybe you try to do a panda scan in post, you can actually do that within the camera yes. itself. And significant zoom range on this too, so you get your establishing wides all the way to your extreme close up. Yep. Something like this. Yeah, I mean, that's great. And I think you touched upon this earlier too, which I really appreciate the fact that uh, the image quality does match some of the other Canon cameras. So, uh, you know, I, I may be almost even ashamed to admit this, but I do watch quite a bit of reality television, especially around cooking shows. Mm. And the fact that they always have operated cameras, but then they always sneak these in various places of the kitchen or wherever else. Mm -hmm. So for, for programming like that, I think this is kind of a natural wind for those type of environments. Absolutely. And this is the perfect camera to throw up in a grid and get that overhead shot, which in the past was probably a DSLR or a GoPro or something like that. And now it's, it, you have full control of it. You have full pan tilt zoom and you don't, it's, you're not locked into just one overhead wide shot. You could come, you could zoom in and do an overhead close up or you could, you know, it could be a behind the scenes camera for something. So it gives you a little more flexibility than just putting up a traditional standard static camera. Now let me ask you, and this might be a loaded question, mm -hmm. but you've been on plenty of installs, which are probably too numerous to list in this video that we're trying to keep a certain length. But, <laughs> Uh, and these cameras are fairly new, but if there, if there are projects that you can mention or just discuss in, in principle uh, where a camera like this would have really made your life, your the engineering process, the budgeting a little bit easier or just overall better? Yeah, I, I think um, this, this camera is replacing a lot of things that we were doing in the past that, that may have gotten complicated and, and, and it, it really, it starts to get a little bit cumbersome for the user. So in the past, we've done cinema-style cameras on pan tilt heads, right? So we would, we've used C300s on, on pan tilt heads, and, and this is the perfect replacement for that whole system, right? right. Because once you start doing the pan tilt head, you, and with the cinema camera, you have the lenses you have to control. You're kind of controlling the pan tilt head separate from the camera, separate from the lens, and then there's all these different things that have to go into it. This is one cable. It's one, one camera. It, the lens is built in. So it really makes it that much easier to control it, to set it up, and, and to make sure that everything is working every time you want to use it. Right, so repeatability is important as well. Yeah. So it's, uh, yeah. 
And then you mentioned too previously that there are some projects where it's a pop-up style, perhaps like a corporate event. So mm -hmm. are, are there any sort of things that you've picked up along the way that would be really beneficial for those who shoot those type of environments? Yeah, I think um, definitely the NDI, because we've seen in a lot of corporate spaces where they're not doing traditional baseband video anymore. It's every, everything is on the network, which, you know, it gives you basically a built-in router, where in the past you would have to have an SDI router sending your signals around. This is now, you plug in the camera, it's now available on your network. You can pull it up. Anyone that's on that network can go to NDI tools and pull up their, their video, and they can, they can look at all the cameras that they want. And so it's really helpful for producers and, and other people on set that don't necessarily need to be like in the control room or looking over the TD's shoulder. Right. So it, it really opens up the flexibility to having other people view it and, and it, it really makes it a nice working environment because you don't have to have everybody in the same, the same space anymore. Right, and actually maybe that's a good point for, for those that don't know, can you describe NDI and sure. how it's applicable? Yeah, so NDI is a, is a network protocol that is um, for transporting video. Mm -hmm. Um, but the nice thing about it is it, with the PTZ cameras, it, the control works over NDI as well. So if you wanted to pull this camera up on an NDI studio monitor, you would have full PTZ control there. And so you can pan, you can tilt, you can zoom, and the, the camera is, it's, it's just on the network. It's just right. available to anybody. So that's the nice thing about it. You don't need to mess around with, with video routers and trying to figure out which signal is on what input and all that. It's just everything's on the network. It gets an IP address, and you just go. Right. Yeah, I mean, actually, we did that here for our shoot here. We were, uh, you know, control was beyond that camera over there, but, uh, and Avery's in there, so special shout out to Avery for that. But uh, when we were setting up lighting and everything in this room, we just had our laptops open. Right. And we were able to see all these camera feeds, yep. which is great that we could control blocking um, and lighting cues and whatnot here. And control the head using the joystick on yep. the, uh, the built-in GUI, yeah. which is pretty clever. Um, now, the other aspect of NDI, which is unique too, is that Canon includes it with the camera. So it's not an extra charge or a license or anything along yes, those lines. Yes, that's correct. There's some other cameras out there that you have to buy the license or you, know, you can add it on later. This comes standard built in. And um, it's just ready to go out of the box. So it, it, they really, Canon really tries to make it easy for everybody, where it's all built in, and you, it's it's very easy to just get into the web GUI and start to make changes to the camera and set it up the way you're you're intended to use. It. Right. I think the essentially what it sounds like is it's got sort of really great flexibility options, um, and it just sort of be able to slot into various types of production mm -hmm. and just excel at all of those. Yeah, absolutely, and it, and it it just kind of simplifies. Like there's gonna, there's always gonna be a place for your big camera packages, right? right? And, but this is something that can just be an addition to that, and it's something that you don't have to necessarily worry about as a B cam, right? Even even like when you're on set, building up a B cam takes time. Sure. This is not gonna take time if you stick it on a tripod and you know you you just wheel it around where you need it, and that's that's the beauty of it is it really matches well. It's got the large sensor, and it it, it really has the ability to make high quality images. That's great. Well, JC, I really appreciate you spending the time taking it out of your busy schedule uh, to talk a little bit about the Canon CRN500s. No problem. I appreciate it. So that'll do it for today. Thank you for watching. Catch you on the next one.